Drew Brees now, one of the all-time greats, a Super Bowl champion and MVP, 17 NFL seasons, is joining us via the Coward Global Satellite Network. <laughs> You know, I'm watching the documentary Tom vs. Time, Drew, and I'm watching Bill, the two Bills last night, the documentary, and it strikes me that Belichick and Brady are very similar. They're obsessed. They're workaholics. They're detail-oriented. And that their relationship has endured because they're really very similar. Academic leaning a mile deep into football and family. That's what they love. And, and I look at you quarterbacks that last with your coach, and they always say opposites attract. But my argument is they may attract each other, but in order to work long-term in a marriage or in a football marriage, you have to have some morals, some values that you share. You and, you and your coach, Sean Payton, literally are connected at the hip intellectually. Did you know it instantly? Yeah, I mean, I felt that, certainly. Um, you know, he was the first person to reach out to me uh, back – uh, during free agency, and that was coming off of my shoulder injury, which was pretty significant. And, um, I'm sure there were a lot of people that felt like, you know, I, I, was, I wasn't going to be able to come back and play or certainly play at the same level. And um, yet that first call that I received was from Sean Payton um, right after he'd gotten the job in New Orleans saying that, uh, you know, he wanted me to come down and be his quarterback. And so right off the bat, just the, the confidence that he showed in me um, at a time when, you know, I was – I was pretty down and out, I, obviously coming off of that injury, not knowing what the future held for me. Um, that was significant. And, you know, from my first visit with him where, you know, he started showing me the offense. I remember on the, on the, uh, on the dry erase board and, and, and he, he started drawing up plays that I had run in San Diego that were some of my favorite plays just as you watch film. And yep. he said, you know, these are, these are plays that I know you do well. These are plays that are your favorites. So guess what? This is going to be one of the staples of our offense because I, I want to, I want to, in essence, build this around you and what you do well. And so, for a head coach to do that, especially in his first year there as a head coach, you know, a lot of times they come in and say, "Hey, my way or the highway," and you learn it or you know you're out. And it was, it was. Uh, I felt like I had, I had a say and I had involvement, and we were doing this together. You know, we, we were in it together always. And so, you know, here we are, 12 years later, and to to watch what. You know, I think our teams have been able to accomplish and what we've been able to be a part of and to watch the offense evolve. Um, it's, been, it's been an amazing journey. I watched that game against Minnesota, and I said the following Monday, that's as well as I've seen you play. And I have a theory, Drew, that the reason you and Phillip Rivers and Tom Brady and some of you veteran guys have never been better is because about five years ago, we stopped using huddles. And the smart guys who were great pre-snap with the right coach are eating this league up. I think you're as good as you've ever been. The only thing I worry about, your legs, the push-off, physically. How long can you go, Drew? You know, I, I, I made the statement a couple of years ago that I felt like I could play till 45. You know, I felt like I had kind of found somewhat of a fountain of youth at that time in regards to what I was doing from a training perspective and recovery and diet and sleep habits and just, you know, everything, um, mechanics and, and, and um, how obsessive I am about that. And, you know, I still think that's possible. Um, it's just a matter of, of whether, you know, I want to do that, you know, and I, I feel like that's still so far away. You know, I'm 39 years old right now. And I think the approach that I took this year may be different than what I have in the past is um, I, I, I really just stayed in the moment, you yeah. know, and, and, and I didn't think I didn't look past anything other than what was right in front of me and just valuing each and every day and each and every opportunity and, um, you know, enjoying the locker room even, you know, a little bit more and enjoying the wins a little bit more, you know, just just um, taking time just to enjoy that, but also staying very focused on the task at hand um, and not taking anything for granted. You know, I, I never want to do that. And, you know, I don't know when I'm going to walk away from this game. I'd like to do it on my own terms. You know, I'd like to do it because, hey, I'm ready for the next chapter in my life or um, whatever it might be, as opposed to everybody, 32 teams telling me I can't play anymore. Um, but I don't know when that's going to be, you know. And, and so I'll sit here and tell you that I know I'm playing this year and I know what my focus is going to be. And that's a singular focus about how to win a championship. I feel like we have the team to do it. I feel like it's going to be a lot of hard work. I feel like we're going to have to create a great sense of urgency this offseason in regards to our preparation and creating that edge for ourselves. But I'm looking no further past this year. 
I want to get this in because we're up against the clock, and uh, Drew is nice enough to join us, and he's bouncing around on radio shows today. He launched a youth football flag league called Football in America. FNA is a nationwide six-on-six co-ed youth flag football league for kids kindergarten through eighth. Uh, we got about a minute here. Drew, fire away on it. Promote yeah. it. Thank you again. Promote it. Yeah, so, you know, I played flag football all the way up until ninth grade. You know, that's when I transitioned to flag football. And, uh, listen, I think I think – Football right now is, is at risk because I think a lot of parents feel like tackle football is the only option and, and therefore their kids aren't playing. Well, I'm here to tell you that we do have an option and it's football in America. It's flag football. Um, but also, I, I feel like flag football has been very fractured in our country over the last, you know, five years as this began to, you know, kind of pick up. And that is because everybody's playing by different rules. Some are five on five, some are seven on seven, you know, some are six on six. So bottom line is we tried to create a real standard, a real gold standard for flag football. We want this to be the premier flag football league in this country to not only help kids um, learn the game of football and then if they ever wanted to transition to the tackle football game, but also to create a fun, family-friendly environment that is great for communities, that brings communities together um, and kind of unites us all. So um, if you want to learn more uh, uh, information about our leagues, you can go to playfna.com. Um, we're looking to expand our leagues across the country. We had three in New Orleans this last fall. We're probably going to have 15 to 20 of them coming up the next fall, and we're going to continue to expand it nationwide. Um, we're looking for commissioners right now to run those leagues um, a, a, in which we would provide support uh, to them. It would all be under the Football in America umbrella, though. So, again, playfna.com. We're really excited to expand these leagues nationwide. Drew, appreciate it. Always got your back. I love watching you play. Keep playing, bud. You're a pleasure. Thanks, man. You got it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.